Hello everyone and welcome to our second video in the um, series of looking at the forthcoming book for our Radley 175 anniversary. The uh, book is Untold Stories, which is a celebration of 175 years of Radley's founding principles from 1847 to today and, and beyond into the future. Today we'll be looking at sacred music at Radley uh, and I'm joined by Claire Sargent, uh, Radley Don and College Archivist and also the author of the Radley 175 book, Untold Stories. So I'm Simon Brand, uh, I am the publications editor here at the Radley Society. Um, so Claire, um, we're going to talk about sacred music at Radley, hello. hello. Um, so let's start off at the beginning um, and look at why sacred music was so important to Sean Singleton at the foundation of the college. Well, it's absolutely central to the concept of the college that um, the chapel should be at the heart of uh, the heart of the school and worship of God, particularly through beautiful music and beautiful objects, what should be something that the boys were really learning about. One of the four founders, the, the, the four men that first met in this famous tea party in Tell Street was Edwin Monk, uh, who became the presenter of Radley. Um, he was the first presenter. He was very well known as a, an organist and a composer, hymn writer. Uh, we still sing in school and in many churches. Um, and in fact, I gave a talk recently to a uh, WI who all burst out singing his song, Angel Voices Ever Singing Around the Throne of Light. And that has a really lovely verse in it, which, which um, kind of encapsulates what they were thinking, which is um, craftsman's art and music's measure. For thy pleasure, all combine. Which I always that is absolutely lovely. Yeah, lovely. Um, and, and the idea was that there should be a, a, a sung service uh, pretty much every day in school. And for that, one of the things that they did was that they uh, invented the, the servitor system, uh, which, which is um, what we would now call poor boys sort of working. Uh, working their passage so that so they came to work as servants, they were cleaners in school and that sort of thing, did a lot of shoe cleaning and so on, but they were also singing in the choir and, and very much like the, um, the chorister system today that they, they were being taught music so they could go on to learn sacred music um, and have, have careers in the various cathedrals and, and the big uh, Anglo-Catholic churches that were emerging at the time. Mm -hmm. So we've still got a, a link to that idea that, that we train musicians from a very young age yeah. in sacred music. So that was the kind of the foundations of sacred music very much at the heart of what Radley was about as, when the college was being founded. Um, so how did that develop through time? Um, were there key people who, who took the idea of sacred music and took it on to the next level? Well, well one, of the, one of the things that was... Um, in development throughout the Victorian period, um, and particularly towards the end of it, uh, was that as sacred music was, was becoming used more and more in, uh, in churches, it, there, there'd been a hiatus in the 18th century. You might sing uh, Wesleyan hymns in, in, a, in a Methodist meeting or something, but not particularly in the Church of England, music had sort of, sort of faded away. Um, and they had congregations who really wanted to sing. So you have a, a lot of, um, uh, discovery of um, earlier hymns uh, and, and people writing new hymns. Um, and, and one of the um, impetuses behind that was always actually finding songs and hymns that could be sung in the public schools, in the boys' public schools. Um, so there were a couple of hymn books which were created as anthologies. Actually, Singleton and Monk co um, uh, did one, the Anglican Hymn Book, which has a, a set of the most obscure hymns you can possibly imagine. Um, Singleton wrote an awful lot of them himself. Really unsingable, hopeless, should be consigned to the bin. Um, they, don't much, they don't get much airtime these days, though. They, they don't, none at all. I don't think they've ever, ever been signed to them. Um, but what there was, uh, was uh, in 1919, there was a... Um, uh, an anthology was published, which was the most influential uh, hymn book uh, of, the, um, of the early 20th century, uh, which was the public schools hymn book. 
talking to my husband who, who, who went to a minor public school we won't name. Uh, and he said, oh yeah, we, we sang from that. So back in the 1970s, they were still using uh, the public school's hymn book. Uh, and that, the editors of that were, were two people, one of whom was William Ferguson, and the other was a great chap called Athelstan Riley. Uh, and Athelstan Riley, um, while they were compiling it, actually came across to talk to the Radley Music Society um, about the hymns that the boys liked singing. They, uh, they, they sang to him, they shared their experiences of what makes a good hymn. Uh, it's part of the collation uh, process. It's part yeah, of- he was putting together that hymn book, he came and yeah. spoke to the boys at Radley at the time. Yeah, it is. It, it, okay. it, it, it's absolutely lovely. And, and, and one of those, those great um, continuity moments, again, that uh, only yesterday was the, um, the Music Society met. Um, they had talk from the um, from biology dons about um, the science of music. So they're still, they're still there talking and, and, uh, and learning. Um, but Athelstan's co-editor uh, was a guy called uh, William Ferguson, who at the time was pre-center of Lansing. Um, Radley had uh, asked him to come and be pre-center of Radley and he had turned the post down. We don't entirely know why, but he, um, he did. Uh, but then, a few years later, 1925, he was actually appointed as warden of Radley College, which is a really interesting career move from pre-centre to warden. When he left Radley in 1937, he went on to become uh, pre-centre of Salisbury Cathedral. Uh, so again, a very influential man in, in the uh, in, in sacred cathedral music. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, the thing about Ferguson was that obviously, as a musician, he was very cultured, but he was also very much on the forefront of, um, of technology. So we have this lovely photograph from uh, the 1950s of him recording about, at the BBC about uh, hymns and, and, um, and so on. There he is, he's the, uh, he's the guy on the right with, with his arm up. Uh, but uh, Radley and his connection with the BBC go back a little bit further than that because as when he was actually warden here, the, um, the lead musician in the school, not the presenter, but uh, the teacher of violin was a man called Loris Blowfield, uh, who went on to, uh, he was simultaneously at the Royal Academy of Music, um, but he was regularly in the 1930s uh, broadcasting concerts um, on on BBC television. So this is this is television right at BBC right in its infancy. These concerts were being um, premiered or practiced again at Radley with the boys there. So um, every time if I'm looking through the Radley and I find a, a reference to Lois Blowfield, uh, Mr. Blowfield, and his accompanist gave this wonderful concert to us this evening. And what you'll find, if you, now they've put the Radio Times online, which is absolutely wonderful, I can find a few days later, that same concert is being broadcast on the BBC. So it's a trial run at Radley College. So it's a, yeah, again, it's a trial run in, in the school. So the school are hearing this wonderful high caliber of music um, and feeding that into what's being heard outside. So we've got, um, Ferguson, and what we have are, are some wonderful hymns that he himself wrote. And what, one of the things about him was that he became a John Bridcut when he was write, recently writing about musicians at Radley. Um, described as, I think, one of the most influential hymn writers of the, uh, the age. So what we end up with is um, hymns that people will well know all hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, which has a, a great um, chorus line. I'm not going to burst into song with any of these. But, you know, anyone who feels they want to, they can sing along. Um, the other one, which is absolutely great, um, is uh, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised, which comes up constantly. It's, it's constantly sung at uh, confirmation services. 
Uh, and what is absolutely lovely is, is that uh, the tune for that is called Draw the Coat. And um, a few years ago, I was at the, uh, the induction of the latest vicar of, uh, of, of Wall Coat. And this basically, this was top of the playlist. So obvious reasons, yeah. For obvious reasons. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Um, this is quite, very it's quite, a mark, quite a marked difference between Singleton's hymns and their falling by the wayside completely to, to these ones, to, which to are still ones. very much in use even today. Exactly. Uh, so so this is this is Ferguson's um, legacy, which is still there for us today. And um, certainly uh, it's because of Ferguson's links to us with the BBC that, that we end up from, we're, with the first public recording of Radley itself. So 1956, the, um, the Whitsuntide service was recorded here and uh, was broadcast uh, across the BBC. So it's a, it's a full service right the way through from the sounds of the um, the sounds of the procession getting together, a little bit of the organ tootling along with um, yeah. into, into the. Uh, Which we actually, I think you've got as, a piece. Yes, as you know, we, as, on the uh, Radley College Archives website, there this has been uploaded, so we can have a listen to that now or a section of it now. So there we go. So obviously a lot going on there, but what were we what were we listening to there? What could we hear? All we're doing there is a very formal part of the service, which which is the versicles of the responses. Um, so we, we're we're hearing the uh, the soprano line of the choir singing one line to be answered by the entire school. Um, and, and so what we're actually hearing there it are the voices of Radley singing, and one of the distinctive things both the influence of the public schools hymn book, um, because it was written for boys' schools, there's very much this sense that that distinctive sound of the school singing, that if, if you walk outside in, in non-COVID times, if you walk outside the chapel and, and, and the, the quad is simply filled with this wonderful bass and tenor of the boys. It's a, it's a very, very distinctive sound. And I think it, it kind of influenced the, um, the kind of hymns which had a lasting, um, lasting impact uh, because they are slightly easier to sing. They're slightly lower registers. They're very uh, robust in many ways. So these two Ferguson hymns we just talked about, Oh Jesus, I have promised, so they're um, very, very melodious, but easy to sing. Um, yeah. So that distinctive sound, I think, is also part of Radley's legacy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's great to hear that. Music. Yeah. Great to hear that recording and to actually get, get that sense of, of what that sounds like. And hopefully COVID times will allow, will come to a, some sort of conclusion and, and the college will be able to go back mm. to that, that es essence of one of the reasons for chapel being extended was to allow that singing that 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 sounds to with a new organ being put in to have that that whole sense of that that sound across of, 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 the, of the sacred music uh, between the between the boys and the music itself um something i think everyone is looking forward to um so yeah speaking of, of kind of looking forward you talked about some of the legacy there um and some of the technology that's been involved i was wondering how is the college 
dealing with sacred music now, especially with what's happened with COVID and lockdown. Um, so sort of what, you know, examples of that legacy continuing? Well, we, we, we've had some lovely, um, lovely examples of the use of technology. Um, right, right way back before the first lockdown, as the school was preparing, uh, one thing was that the choir actually recorded uh, a number of um, anthems, uh, verse calls and responses and so on, so that when we were in, um, in lockdown, uh, chapel services were broadcast to the whole community and they included the sound of our own choir singing already pre-recorded. Uh, but one of the uh, lovely initiatives that's been happening under, under Virtual Rally 2, and, and actually a little bit before then, starting back, um, back from last summer, um, has been that they've been recording uh, school assemblies or material which can be used by schools for assemblies um, across Oxfordshire. Uh, and that's, that's, that's been a really lovely initiative. Again, it's introducing this, the idea of this music into schools which no longer have regular hymns necessarily and haven't heard this this type of, of music for, for a while so it's it's been really good to, to see what they're doing with those recorded assemblies a lovely act uh, as part of our partnerships program yeah so the the whole idea like going back to the start from the importance of sacred music is that continuation all the way through mm. through ferguson through the recordings of the 1950s all the way through to the virtual radley um, and, and the recording of hymns for the one, for not just for, you know, not just for Radley itself, but as you say, for, for the schools in the local area. And yeah. it kind of shows that lovely arc and that continuation of, of everything that, you know, the, the foundation of the school is still, still kind of very much driving the things that happen, that yeah. happen here now. Exactly, exactly. But it is very much an untold story. It's, it's, it's so much so much a part of what we do naturally that we never actually explore it and look at it and say, why do we do this thing? And, and what has been its impact? And, and yeah. that's what's coming out in the in book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, like Claire says, that's one of the reasons for the book. So Claire, thank you very much for your time. Uh, really interesting, really I see the, those um, recordings are available on the Bradley College Archives website. So if you'd like to have a look at them, um, you can go there and for anyone, who would like to order the book that's available um, through our publishing partners, Profile Editions. The address there is profileditions.com forward slash Radley. Thanks very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>